Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today we have Chris Traget from Publisher Discovery. And when we were talking to him, we agreed that instead of making this like a presentation or a webinar, which can be actually very boring, uh, we want you to do something very interactive, a workshop. And that's something Chris has been already trying in, uh, in the last months with a very much success. So that's what we want you to do. We want to make it uh, very interactive. And he's going to show how you can find your affiliates, your next best affiliates that you need to accelerate your program. And he's going to show it live. So this is not a PowerPoint. Uh, for that reason is that I invite you uh, on the audience attending today, and I see that we have an interesting, interesting number of people joining us uh, to shoot the questions and we will start showing how it is done. And in general, the dynamic is uh, you can tell the name of your company if you feel like, or you can just say the industry, and perhaps you might want to name some of your competitors, and, and that's going to give you a better idea on the results and that Chris can produce for us. I hope that you are all excited as I am for this. So Chris, uh, mm -hmm. thank you very much for joining us and, and for dedicating this time to, to show the audience how, how we can do it. It's a pleasure. Thanks very much, Ed. Um, brief intro. Um, I've been around affiliates for a few years, since about just after the earth cooled in about 2003. So um, we've got a few years behind me, network side and client side. And that's where I discovered how tough it is actually finding affiliates. It's the toughest job you've got, as you probably know, and the one that always gets pushed down the schedule after everything else you're doing. Um, but when we started doing this, I determined that what we had to do is to actually make this much easier and a bit more pleasurable so that you can actually kind of do stuff and save a bit of time. And we have some users who've said that they can save up to five hours a week in just searching for and recruiting affiliates. So I'll dive in and show you kind of the way it works and, and how we kind of uh, make, make the whole thing work for, on behalf of our users. Um, Pardon me, I'll just assemble some pictures because you know what it's like when you're working on multiple screens. <laughs> so I can be talking to you as well. Now I'll be looking over there, so I'm not ignoring you. I'm just uh, just checking out how, how the platform looks. Um, yeah, and I would just look... interrupt you if, if there yeah. is a question that, that uh, I need yeah, to sure. answer. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you would be uh, in control of cool. it. Smashing. Okay, great stuff. Um, so. Um, just to dive straight in, what we thought was kick off with CBD is one of the most vibrant uh, verticals there is at the moment. Um, a lot of activity, a whole load of new people appearing in it, a whole load of new advertisers um, and people kind of gearing up kind of, it's been opened up massively over the past few years, the whole thing of dealing with kind of cannabis resin and, and actually growing it legally without being locked up, which is a, a very strong plus point for that sector. Um, and uh, it's become a really, really powerful sector. And I think probably one of the most exciting ones we've got going at the moment. And um, so we thought we'd have a look at this. The platform we've got is deceptively simple. Um, and what we've done is we analyzed all the affiliate tracking we find um, and it's not necessarily all of it. So if it's a tracking domain we haven't come across, um, very often our users will say, oh, have you looked for this one? They, their affiliate link is blah, blah, blah. We'll look at the tracking domain, think, okay, add that to our system. And currently we index about 370 so tracking domains. And I know we're adding about another 50 or so next month anyway. So uh, it's an ongoing kind of thing, keeping up with where the tracking's happening. We see about 2.7 billion links from that going to from about three and a half million affiliate sites, I think is actually going to run, run up from there. But three and a half million was the last time I looked, going to just over half a million advertisers. So it's a massive amount of data. And what we do is we show that in a really, really simple format so that basically uh, you only see the, the information you really, really need. Now, it's something we're building on the fly. So this is kind of a a year or so in, and we've been adding more and more fun and games into it. And uh, so what it's about is looking for potential affiliates who are linking to through to advertisers and then getting some idea using AI and machine learning of how relevant they would be for, uh, for our users. So as mentioned vertical, the platform gives you access to ability to dig through all sorts of them. So entertainment, fashion, gifts, homewares, 
online stuff, sports, even travel, even when we can't travel at the moment properly, certainly not in the UK. And I think uh, things are starting to ease out. My daughter lives in Sydney and she can't wait for us to go over there, but uh, I don't think any Australians will be letting Brits in there for a long time to come yet. Um, <laughs> so what we can do is then, we're having a look at CBD under a health sector. And we see here about seven and a half thousand results and it's global. So you'll find, as you can see, uh, some Spanish language, some English, um, all sorts of different things. And you'll see German and loads of different, different types of um, publisher. Um, you can see here we're looking by relevance and that relevance is based upon um, a number of things. But the key thing is what publishers or what advertisers they're linked through to. So the seedling truck, my CBD authority, linking through to just one advertiser that's in this sector. And um, you can see from that that uh, we can understand that they have a fairly strong um, affinity and relevance to the health CBD sector. If I was to flip that around and make it totally different, you would end up with all the coupon sites appearing, uh, which are great. Everyone knows the main coupon sites that are driving revenue. The difficult part is finding sites that are actually relevant and that have their own audiences. And I think that's one of the key things that you really need to start thinking in terms of with the way tracking is changing. Look at your publishers and look at their audiences. Each one of these will have a different set of people that they're talking to. There will be overlaps. But if you wanted to look at my CB, CB, I can't say it, my CBD authority or whatever, uh, or the CBD guru, you can see there, uh, you can get an idea of what they're doing. Visit the site, have a look at the Facebook, check out their Instagram. Um, we can see also that they're linked to five other affiliate networks. And you can see here, we've discovered some um, uh, contact details for them. So you can contact via social and you can contact via email. So maybe Jaden Pyre is the person, it could well be, or Rachel. So you can take your pick. And as you can see there, what you can do is you can click through and you can actually mark them as contacted. So if you're running this as your program, you can say, okay, right, we've contacted them. Um, and it just means that you can curate that information within your platform so that you can then reach out um, and look for them. What you can also do is you can favorite them. So if you think, right, that looks good. I like the look of CBD Authority, Seedling Truck. Um, Savvy Shopper, maybe not, but Prime CBD Benefits, yeah. Petpedia, it depends whether if you're um, a CBD uh, advertiser, a merchant, and you don't do products for pets, you think, okay, they're not useful for me, so you can gray them out, they just disappear. If you want them to reappear, you just show the hidden affiliates and bring them back in. You see here, there's also a traffic score, which you're bringing from a third party. Um, it's pretty good, not perfect, but it's pretty good. But if you wanted to say, uh, wish to put it up to get rid of all the sites with no traffic at all, uh, you end up with kind of something half decent. Uh, so you see CBD Guru is worth having there. And, um, and there's plenty of others in there. So Pan-African Alliance is quite an interesting one. <clears throat> and is the executive officer, that's a grand title there. Working with CJ in Rakuten. And you can see here, there's also something else shows up. Where we see two, three, four, five, ten 10 sites all using the same Google Analytics key, we can group them together. So we know that uh, Pan-African Alliance is also connected to unitedblackamerica.org. So it just gives you the ability to actually reach out. So when you visit, reach out to uh, the executive officer, say, oh, I love what you've been writing on your site, like what you're doing. Uh, so you seem to be connected to that site as well. Uh, thought we could work together. Um, how about kind of developing a partnership so that we can work together on, on the CBD sector? And so it really is very simple. And again, we got this guy only works at Pepper Jam, but um, support that CBD review looks like it's in Germany. Um, I would take sometimes that with a pinch of salt. It could be a German program. It could be just connecting to German websites, but uh, a visit to the site will normally tell you what's going on. And if, if, you, uh, if it's all in German, then uh, it doesn't look necessarily like it's in German. No, it's, it looks like it's kind of pretty much global. And uh, CBD Pure, I guess it's a US-based site. It could well be a, a German-based affiliate but it could be that uh, the programs he signed up to may well be in Germany as well. So really, really simple to kind of go through and say, okay, I like the look of that one. I like pharmacists, don't like the look of pharmacists, but I like uh, menopause goddess, CBD for the elderly, et cetera. So you can see how, how you can make it work. You can also do a little flick here and let's just have a look at the US ones. 
and that should exclude all the other ones who are non-US based. Uh, and you can see from seven and a half thousand, that gets your, your target list down to something a bit more manageable. If you were thinking, okay, let's just have even higher traffic score, um, and let's top and tail it. The ones with the highest traffic sites, they're things like Wall Street Journal. So you can just knock the first 10 off, 10% off as well. And that gets you a list of something around a thousand. So that becomes far more usable. I, I mentioned the top traffic sites. If you're as an entrant into the marketplace, um, you will find the biggest affiliates will be the hardest for you to contact. They'll take an email from Macy's and from Walgreens and people like that. But if you're yet another one of the emails coming through, bear in mind a lot of these big affiliates, they're receiving between four and 6,000 advertiser emails a month. So actually cutting through that can be really tricky. So I would always say, yeah, great, send an email, but also connect with them as well. So if you've got, I don't know what, what your program is, kind of best CBD underscore AFS or affiliate or something like that, set up a specific affiliate program um, just on your Twitter. So you've got a specific Twitter account. You can then follow them on Twitter and they get a notification in the email that they check every hour or so uh, to say that they're now being followed by, by best CBD affiliates. That should normally spark a bit of interest. Okay, that looks like a connection there. Let's go and have a chat. So, and they're on those various networks. So obviously serious affiliates. So I would guess a quick email out to Ian should just about cut the, cut the mustard there. So Mark has contacted, you've emailed him, you've followed him on Twitter. Um, and the Twitter bit and Facebook and LinkedIn, what it does, it enables your email to actually get noticed. So it kind of cuts underneath the email radar. That's a phrase I've nicked from uh, Sarah Bundy. So thank you very much to AIM for that one. Um, but it literally it does because it's, it's people look at social. You'll do it yourself. You'll be looking at Twitter. You'll be looking at Facebook before you check the email list, particularly if something's hit your spam filter. So always, I'd always uh, advise that it's really worthwhile. Um, so that's the, the simple one. If at the end of the month you think, right, I've exhausted, we're at the end of two months, I've exhausted that vertical, you might think, okay, health is general. Let's look at uh, something else a bit more broader in terms of health. So you might want to go for pure healthcare because there's an overlap. Or if your products are also for a beauty sector, you can look at beauty. Um, so you can see, or if there's a weight loss element to what you're doing, then yeah, go for those as well. Each one of those will have an overlap with your current audience. So bear in mind that you'll see some of the same names, but that's because they have a broader audience than just that one CBD product. They are kind of affiliates who are looking for a number of different sectors. Oh, I love that's it. The, you know, uh, uh, Chris, uh, sorry to interrupt you. You know, uh, that's quite all right. one of the questions is about uh, nutritional supplements. Actually, there is a question before, but it's yep. a segue because of you just yeah. mentioned. And as you, as, as you say, it's common that uh, people in the CBD industry will have products that can be actually, mm. they can partner with people on, already on the nutritional space very well, right? So yeah. the comedy was very handy because that's one of the questions from the audience saying, if you can find um, affiliates on the nutritional supplement space. Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's not, I mean, as you can imagine, we've got 80 different verticals here, so there won't be anything specifically about supplements. But if your nutritional supplements are aimed at more of a weight loss product, weight loss area, you can flick over straight away to, to that kind of, and you'll see an entirely other set of potential affiliates. It's already set the filters there. You can see you go back to, it's not 25, all loads in the background. Yeah, 7,800 sites, so all sorts of diff different things there. There's some po uh, Portuguese blog spots there. So is I life ept? I can't even say that. I don't speak Portuguese, so my apologies, Ed. Um, Brazilian sites, as you can see, a whole load of things. And again, you might want to say, OK, let's go for just US and maybe Canada, because we can sell to Canadians as well. Um, and that cuts your numbers down significantly. That, that cuts you down to 3-3. Three, three. And so you can see so there's healthy diets, bodybuilding blowouts. So that could be kind of a useful one healthy weight loss, um, and you can see there, two contacts in there, admin, unsubscribe, it's a really good one to, to get. <laughs> um, and they're already working with three networks. So if they're working with multiple networks, it's likely that they're more attuned and more interested in signing up with, with uh, other programs as well. Somebody who's only on one program um, on one network, 
they're much harder to actually recruit. I've certainly found that in the past. 10 years, 11 years ago or so, I, when I was setting up a program from scratch, it was in the web hosting sector. Um, and I had to look around and see where on earth to, to put it because there were so many networks, even back then, back in the old days. Um, every other web hosting company was on CJ, so it's pretty much, a, you know, have to go there. That's what you have to do. So sign up for CJ. So it made sense those days. Nowadays, so many more of the more active affiliates will have thousands of potential um, partnerships. So they'll be working across multiple networks and across multiple programs and loads of in-house networks as well. So, so don't be worried to, to reach out. But if they're only looking at one, they're only signed up to one program, it may be a much tougher sell to actually get them to respond to you. Uh, I have um, a Chris. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let's let's uh, put ourselves in the shoes of someone who have their um, di direct to consumer brand on yeah. on any uh, big uh, platform, and they don't know they never run an affiliate program, and yeah. they really for whatever reason they really want to get uh, control of the early affiliates they hire because they can go and yeah. hire, hire an agency and that's perfectly an option mm -hmm. and it's a great option. But some yeah. cases, uh, that owner might choose to say, I want to have control of these first affiliates. I want to get a sense of that. I want to learn from that and then try mm. to scale, probably using some external help. At the beginning, the first steps, I want to be in control. And so that, that the data point you shared that uh, the biggest affiliates, we get so many emails and mm. it's going to be hard for them to cut through the noise, as, as you mm. stated, and you share some very nice practices. But what other suggestion you can make to this uh, Shopify or big commerce store owner mm -hmm. who really wants to make his brand grow and, and is looking at this uh, solution as a way to start finding the right people to partner with? What, what else yeah. would you advise them to do? Okay, um, you can look at your vertical. You can also look at your competitors as well. So you know that uh, your competitors will be running a program and generally they're a bit hidden. Uh, what we've done here is uh, we've enabled you to look at one. So for instance, if this one say um, cornbread hemp oil, you can see that oh, they've got 185 affiliates on their program. And here they're sorted by traffic score. So you've got some of the names that we saw before, health.com that we reached out to, and you've got key to cannabis, the onion, um, Kinja, Tech Support Alert, whatever that might be, but they're all sending traffic through to Cornbread Hemp. Um, and it's very easy to search for that. So if you wanted to flick it over to cosmetics, for instance, uh, so if I were to kill the slot, and well, actually what I will do is, I'll, I'll just before doing that, what I'll show you is that uh, by having multiple advertisers in there, you can then look at the gap analysis and see where the overlaps are in the, in the uh, between them. Uh, so which of the affiliates are linking through to minimum of two? And that gives you a really great idea. So if you were running in Docker or one of these other ones, you think, right, that lot there, that's the gaps in my program. So which is why it's called a gap report. So massive gaps there. And Docker's linking to Soberpedia, but that's not massive. Um, so it just gives you an ability to look at those there. Then you can reach out. They're linking to 27 networks and discount codes, as you would expect. Um, but there's one contact info at might get a chance there, but again, follow them on Twitter, Instagram if it's fashion or cosmetics as well. So if you want to look at, say, cosmetic brands, for instance, I'll show you quickly what we can do. Uh, we can quickly tweak this lot. And what I'll do is look for somebody like um, Sephora, if I can spell. Normally my typing then completely hits the buffers. So yeah, you can see here Sephora have different programs for different countries. So Canada, there's 13. China, 57, 2000 on the com, Australia, 43. So if you're a global player, this can be really useful to see different programs with different affiliates pushing, so, and, and BR as well. If you've got global affiliates, they may well be the same people. You never know until you start working with them because it could well be they just got a slash BR page for Brazilian um, visitors. So they use landing page. Some of the big guys will do. But if we look at sephora.com for a start off, and maybe add some others in there. So um, as it's Eve's Russia, I think, in that actually find us something up oh, again, Canada site, US site, even a Dutch site there with seven on them. Uh, and we'll, we'll add a couple of others. So uh, Sigma, I think, is another one. Sigma Beauty, isn't it? 
this is where my knowledge of beauty products rather hits. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if someone like Clarins has a program. Uh, uh, Clarins, can't, well, yeah, yes, they do. Clarins, Co UK, Clarins ES, FL, uh, .com 87. So there you go. So there's four for a start off. And as you can see, it reloads really, really fast. Check all that log out. So if you were a Mac Cosmetics or somebody entering with a, with a brand new, maybe hemp based cosmetic, there's 2000 results you can start shaking sticks at. Um, and you can do it by traffic score, but you'll find Martha Stewart weddings might well get an awful lot. Reporter news may be a bit difficult. Someone like Insider, you can see there Insider is a massive publisher and they also own all of these domains as well. So actually that might not be if you're kind of lowest hanging fruit. So that's why I suggest maybe doing topping and tailing, maybe look at pure relevance to kick off with, and then just have a, a look for the mid ranging ones. So from those 2000 or something, you can slice it down to, there's a couple of hours work in the morning, 369 results to crack on with. Uh, so that should keep you busy for a little while. Um, so Stephanie Lounge Makeup has got reasonable traffic um, and works on impact and reward style. So obviously keen as an admin contact, so it might get through. but it's cosmetics. Get yourself an Instagram handle which talks about your cosmetic brand. They'll follow you. You follow them. You've got an opportunity for a direct relationship then because you can contact via things like Twitter, Facebook, and whatever. As soon as you've got that connection, you've got an opportunity for contact. It's not just about email and you won't just languish in their email in inbox until one of the interns comes and empties it out next month because that's what can happen if you're not too careful. So yeah, I would say just get involved. Get involved in the chat as well. Um, across LinkedIn, across Instagram. So get involved in, in the chat across your space. It's, it's your market. So you need to be making a noise in it. From our own point of view, we deal in affiliate networks, data and things like that. So myself and the team are constantly out there on Twitter, Facebook, talking about this, that and the other. Um, I think this week we've shared a, a blog post just looking at all the affiliate management podcasts that are available. And I think we found about 10. And we've had four other people say, hey, you want to get involved in this one? So it's really great. So you, you get kind of the ability to have those conversations. And if you're having those conversations, you're making a bit of a wave. And when you say, come and join our program, you're in there. So you get a chance for actually kind of um, for, for getting that engagement by being part of the team or part of their part of their environment, rather than just being a new player that's entered. So I hope that's useful. Um, as, as a new entrant, it was really tough. I found the same easy space, really tough getting involved with some of the influencers in the space who are talking with the blue host and one-on-one -on -one internets and, all, and go daddies and the rest. They were a thousand times bigger than our little hosting company, but we managed to get engagement because we were talking with the people, showing them how their C, our cPanel was better than theirs and uh, you know all that stuff. You know, um, But if you've got a cracking good product, uh, get involved in there um, and don't think it's only influencers that deal in cosmetic um, you will find so many of these influencers uh, also operate as affiliates um, particularly over the past year um, because so much of what was a marketing budget which would be uh, just a spend the influencer spend on the rest of it um, what you find is that uh, those budgets were very much clamped down, but anything that's performance based was kept. So um, in, if you think in terms of how performance works, um, so yeah, so the performance worked purely on a sale, uh, whereas an influencer might be after thousand dollars for saying this great things about your product. Um, so many of those guys have come, I've noticed really pu pulling into, um, so Stephanie in the ground, Smashing Beauty, there's a whole load of other ones there. So all these Nikki tutorial, Beauty School Makeup, these guys have all started using affiliate linking because that way they know they can actually get, get some earnings, even if marketing budgets go up and down. Um, sorry, one of, one, of my, uh, one of my hobby horses is uh, to say that um, if you're running an affiliate program, it should not be managed by the... Um, by the marketing guys it should be running by the sale guys because it's a cost of sale it's not a marketing spend um, unless of course you're paying kind of placement tenancy fees or whatever it might be that's, that's <laughs> so, sorry that's an interesting point <laughs> and i'm sure uh, there will be people completely agreeing with you and 
and uh, for a lot of reason, a lot of people disagree, but it's uh, yeah. it's an interesting perspective. Um, something mm. that I remember uh, you, you have uh, mentioned many times in our conversation is that principle that we usually forget that ultimately this is not about finding an email. This is about establishing relationships, right? And that's yeah. the name of the game. Exactly. Uh, you need yeah. to connect, you need to create that trust, you need to um, create that bridge that then will uh, bring the business opportunity. Um, and, and I like that, uh, that perspective. And I'm, and I'm glad that you reminded mm -hmm. everyone in the audience today, today yeah. at that point, because that, that's what it is, right? We need to, we, exactly. we are just finding the entry points, when, but now we need to build that relationship because the alternative is just putting your offers in yeah. in, in any network uh, and get anyone hooking up to that, right? You don't know what's going on, but if you really want to build that base and have a certain degree of control of what's going on with your affiliates and create those strong mm -hmm. relationships, it's going to be like a anchoring point and you're going to grow your program upon those anchoring points, then, then this empowers you to do that. Exactly. And affiliates are people, whatever size they are. If it's uh, Nikki at Nikki's Tutorials, for instance, um, I don't know if she's, uh, no, she's info, but uh, Nikki at Nikki's Tutorials, she's a person that is a publisher that enjoys what she does. But even someone at, say, at Top Cashback, for instance, James Little is a person, he's a bloke who's got family, just moved into a new house. So all of those things I happen to know because I'm active on the social stuff in the affiliate space, so I know all about what he's doing. Um, so understand who they are as people, what drives them. If you understand the person behind it, you know what the driver is. When you know what the driver is and you make sure that you've read their Instagram and whatever and your email actually says, I love your piece on blah, blah, on Twitter or on Instagram or whatever it might be. Um, that shows an engagement. It shows that you've actually read what they're doing. You're interested in what they're doing. If you're interested in what they're doing, they'll be interested in what you're doing. So it's, it's simple, simple kind of stuff. Just kind of treat people as people and treat people with the respect that hopefully they will speak and treat you as well. So yeah, it's that simple. Build, build a relationship and then go uh, after reciprocity and that goes a long way. The um, business follows the relationship, always yeah. does. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, something I, I also I want to highlight is even if, and correct me if I'm wrong because you are the expert on the space, but I think that even if my affiliate program is running strong and I'm happy with the results, I think it's still a good uh, housekeeping practice to get in, uh, into your platform and do this competitive gap analysis and see what the competitors are yeah. doing, how oh, is yeah. my quote unquote coverage. And yeah. in not only thinking on finding the affiliate, but just keeping a sense of temperature of the market. And I don't yeah, exactly myself not doing that on like every month or every two weeks at least and understand what are my competitors doing? What am I missing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I would also say that, yeah, you're out there trying to recruit affiliates. Now, if you're after their share of voice, and if you're after your products being pushed on there, it means they're not pushing somebody else's, which means that constantly you've got affiliate managers on, not exactly an arms race, but if you think of your affiliate program as a leaking bucket, you've got to keep topping it up. You've got to keep the ones in, in there engaged. So maybe a leaking fish tank. So you've got to keep the fish that are in there happy and not falling out. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I love these analogies. Uh, but you've got to keep topping it up. So you, if your program is going to grow, you need to be growing your, your numbers of relationships. If you're growing the relationships, they're talking to each other as well very often, these, these guys uh, across Instagram and whatever it might be. They have relationships as well. So just make sure all your relationships are positive and fun and make sure you're constantly almost like an iteration. So every week, allow a time, maybe a Friday afternoon when it all goes quiet. That could be your discovery time. And then maybe over the weekend, it depends on what works for you. Uh, people used to say, oh, Tuesday to Thursday is best time to email people. Whenever we see uh, any stats on B2B email, it's flat through the week with a slight drop off on a Saturday, but it comes up Saturday late, Sunday, Sunday late on, because people start thinking about work on Sunday. So don't discount any day as being bad for emailing people. People receive them. Uh, they may not get to it straight away. So Tuesday morning, they may not get to that, but you'll get a response. Um, so yeah, um, 
forgot where I was going there. <laughs> no, that, it's, it's that, fantastic. Yeah. And, I, and I like it when, you, when you're sharing your experience and your thoughts. I, I really enjoy this, uh, our conversation. This is not the first one, and hopefully it's not going to be the last one. Yeah, sure. Um, but for, you know, in, in the context of, of, of this, uh, this workshop today, I really wanted to uh, give you the chance to share this experience. Uh, yeah, sure. Thinking on people who uh, have their commerce store, e-commerce store, they don't have experience with affiliate or influencers mm. and how they can use this as a, as a very practical way to very quickly connect with the right people. Yeah. It's like you can build your yeah. action plan and you know where to go. And I cannot agree more on that thing that you emphasize uh, about build a relationship and go after that. I know brands who actually started, uh, you know, founders who start that journey of identifying the right people yeah. on TikTok and Instagram and start following them when they are uh, influencers love to have people on the live streams. So if they are live streaming something on Facebook or TikTok, it's great that you can see that they are there, join that, uh, you know, give feedback, connect with them, um, yeah. you know, be part of, of what's going on. And mm -hmm. I know uh, several cases where they were actually able to connect uh, to these influencers just by doing that those simple things, following those simple yeah. steps, and then just send a direct message. And it's yeah. happy to talk. Uh, call me at this number or send me an email here. There you go. And in a yeah. simple process, you can start building those relationships. I would say the other thing to mention, just looking at the way we do this using this platform it's not the only way you can do it you can do it the hard way like i used to do it years ago of ferreting through google with the, by keyword but you know how tough that is you find yeah there's uh, oh yeah 795,000 pages of results um and yeah most of them are paid for uh, a lot of them are seo results you know every single site that's in this list is operating as an affiliate because they're linking to one of these four programs so you have all the hard work's done. So you know, ah, oh, right, Raincoats Beauty, Prison Pop. Yep, they're affiliates. Okay, great stuff. Uh, they're working on four networks and we've got four people. So VIP creator or info, probably H, probably not HR unless you want a job there as well. Um, but you know for certain that these guys are operating as affiliates, which means it makes life easier. There are SEO tools that you can find affiliate sites on, but very often you'll find that actually the the linking site isn't an affiliate. It might well be Wall Street Journal or something like that. Not to say that Wall Street Journal doesn't operate as an affiliate. It does, um, as does New York Times and all the rest of them. They've all entered the affiliate space massively. Those that hadn't by March, April last year certainly have now. Um, <laughs> we see some local newspaper sites, um, like um, I think Orlando Sentinel is one of them, for instance. It's part of a huge group, 99 different uh, pub um, uh, publishers on on there uh, but they're all kind of all connected through one publishing house Hearst Publishing Cosmopolitan all the rest of the magazines there we see them all connected as well through the um uh, through that uh, that's simple kind of uh, other sites tool um but they're all doing that they're all using affiliate either through something like skim links which we show as well uh, so you can see their shop style reward style are showing up in here so you know what kind of affiliate you're talking to um and the important bit is yeah reach out, make that relationship. If you find them on social, yeah, have a crack and, and talk on social instead. So if you can't find an email address, talk on social, you'll find that there's uh, rewards are gonna be there for you. Excellent. Um, I have, I, th there is one more question uh, from the audience and I don't wanna throw you a curveball with this one. Uh, Sorry. Cool. Because I actually never try when I, when I have tried uh, your platform, I never actually mm -hmm. tried this vertical. Uh, do you yeah. have anything around SaaS companies? SaaS products, yeah. I think probably the best way to do that would be to look yeah, the for something like... That perhaps is just like the example with CBD. You don't have to stick to yeah. CBD. Maybe you go into uh, nutritional supplements, uh, mm. cosmetics. Yeah. Right? There, there are some other uh, traditional, more adjacent adjacent yeah. uh, verticals that can be related. I don't, I don't know in this case if this is business to business services or how we can start yeah. finding leads for that well that that's my immediate thought was okay business services software so if we look at business software for instance uh, right. we can see then 7000 plus results again so 
you can see here techies updates for instance something south african there software vouchers so if you've got coupon codes to play with oh they've got a black of friday let's do taxes so if you're a, if you've got a sax SaaS product around the uh, um the um inland revenue the ir um submission stuff then let's do taxes could be very good um and you can see there kind of uh, all sorts of other stuff web tech coupons business support in ireland if you're a global like most product SaaS products can be nowadays um then you can go for that um yeah something like web tech linked to avangate as you'd expect and digital river which have got quite a lot of SaaS products on it um and um so you, you know if they're linking to avangate which is to check out and it's changed its name again, I think recently, but uh, they're very much into the business software area. So loads of cPanel stuff and all those kinds of things. Um, so it's very likely that uh, web tech coupons could be right up your street. So I'd give info a, a quick buzz, or maybe if you're running kind of my favorite software.com, I'd have a, my favorite software affiliates, Twitter handle, and I'd follow them on Twitter and get involved with them in LinkedIn, perhaps. Um, very, very simple. You know the stuff. If you've got LinkedIn yourself, click on there. And if you're following them, they'll get a notification that they're being followed by you. Uh, I'll not do it just yet. I get confused. <laughs> um, so very simple. 8,000 or so. You might want to slice it down. Let's just look at the higher traffic score ones, um, which enables you then to kind of dig it a bit further. So Rialto Mobile, Texas Network Solutions. So if you're social, if you, if you are kind of a more locally based in that sector, then you can do that specifically by where that is. Uh, if you want to do it by country or by language, you can. So ordenadores um, is uh, Spanish for, for computer. So you might want to do something by ordenadores. Um, pa pardon my Spanish pronunciation, Ed. <laughs> it's not perfect. I will know that. I can help you with that one. Ordenadores portátiles baratos. <laughs> gracias. <laughs> oh, sorry, gracias. <laughs> if you are for Americas. Um, you can also search for a domain. So if, if you wanted, so uh, if you wanted to look for a string, yep, yeah, we found that one site, but it might be so network solutions. So you might want something in network solutions, so verb networks, Texas networks. So there you go. If you've got networking products, um, there you go. There's a whole load of here, which are actually talking about the word network within their domain. So it is domain based this at the moment. I would love for us to be able to do Boolean on the content, but it, as you can imagine, with something kicking towards 4 million affiliate sites to actually kind of curate all the content of, that's going to be a little way. So it might not be this week or next. <laughs> <laughs> and we keep finding more affiliates as well. So I think we'll be kind of kicking well over 4 million soon. Yes. And, and just like when you do uh, uh, desktop research and you start trying to get creative with Google, with your Google search, you have to get creative here. As you say, if your company is on the, is a SaaS company, but your SaaS solution yeah. is for marketing, probably your keyword is around marketing, right? And do more research yeah. about marketing. And that's going to give an idea probably of some of the affiliates that work on the marketing space and might be uh, great uh, mm, to come yeah. with for your SaaS marketing software, that being the case. So we That's right. So if, if it's marketing, you might think, OK, let's have a look at web design. So each month, if you've got an account with us, you can change your vertical and you can change the competitors you're looking at. So here we're looking at web design. And again, uh, so they go freelance, live streamers, um, battle red blog, whatever that might be. I've no idea what that means. It might actually be a translation of Chinese. I'm not sure, um, but no doubt. Oh, they're working with CJ in fact, and share so they're probably US based, I would guess. Um, so a quick email out to them might be quite informative and have a look at the site as well. Yeah, but which that this topic uh, is an interesting topic that you mentioned. Um, there is a one incentive to engage one to one with these people to start following and build that relationship, which is because it's yeah. the right way. But there is also another incentive. Yeah. Today, many of these networks, we, people will just go and register. So everyone is like, like this example, right? Just we mm -hmm. go and register everywhere. And it's yeah. non curated content and it can be mm -hmm. uh, very destructive, right? So yeah, um, that, that's why you also want to engage one to one and use these data points to be able to connect with them first and validate because yeah. 
uh, you know, I have a, like a mixed feeling when I see an affiliate that is in every network and, mm. and it, it can, can be confusing, right? Who is yeah. really able yeah. to add value and who's just registered everywhere, piggybacking, not really adding value or dedicating to what you need them to yeah. do. The, the difference here is that uh, rather than be like so many are registered on every network, we know that because we only look at the links that are live on the sites, uh, these are all affiliates. Tech News Directory is linked up to 17 networks, but he's actually sending traffic to 17 networks. Uh, and it looks like well over 100 different programs. So probably quite um, quite active and well worth uh, a quick link through to Webmaster, maybe. Uh, it might be worthwhile checking Tech News Directory and see if there's a content form, because there may well be a contact form on the site. Um, that's kind of something else that's, that's worthwhile recommending. It's always worthwhile filling those forms in. Uh, you might not get any response back for X months, but you also, they might be under a different name, Tech News Directory on LinkedIn. So it might be technewsdirectory.com is a product of, I don't know, spoofcard.com or something like that, or spoofcard.llc or something like that. Um, find out who it is and then search through there. Then if you're on LinkedIn, for instance, and you can, you're searching for those people, they said web tech coupon. No, it's two employees work there. Now I know that there are one person I've got as a first business developer at Digital Hikes and somebody who's third. So um, it's always worthwhile looking for who's connected. If you've got somebody who's a second or a third, you'll know somebody who can introduce them to, introduce you to them. So if there's really good opportunity for being close, uh, do that. It's well worth it. And if you notice that company, digitalfather.com, uh -huh. If you go back to the list, uh, to the oh. search results, uh, right yeah. above the one highlighted, Digital Father, oh, yeah. that mm -hmm. one show up as on the online web design category, but also show on the first 10 results for the marketing category. That's a good example yeah. that how you can find people related, it can be interesting for yeah. you uh, getting creative uh, with the search. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it is, people have overlapping uh, audiences so this is web design but they'll be dealing with other stuff but about web design they'll be linked up to probably thesis theme on on share a sale and they'll be linked up to i don't know GoDaddy on impact i think it is i've lose track where it moved to programs keep moving around so you lose track where it used to be uh, they're probably also linked up to something like i don't know hp's program and microsoft program and umpteen others so yeah they've got loads of overlap mapping marks that they're dealing with but this is one of the ones that they've got a connection to because yeah. possibly they're linking through to as well as all the stuff on avant link they're possibly they're also doing some forex and look a bit they're linked to eToro so there you go you should be making a good bit of money out of that one uh, <laughs> as well as partnerize and other other the the SaaS providers there um so if if it looks like that could be of interest for your business um do feel free to reach out to Ed and um, I'm sure he'll be able to put you in contact with me and um, we can uh, see how it goes directly for yourself. Do feel free, reach out, say, oh, I've got this particular one. I want to look for this particular competitor and we'll show you what your competitors are up to. Yeah, that's excellent, Chris. Um, so it was really a pleasure uh, having the opportunity to for you to show this uh, to, to our community. And I think that uh, many people will be now thinking of all the things they can do or they should be doing probably and how they can be more effective in, um, yeah. in establishing a more successful and stronger uh, affiliate program. So thank you very much, Chris, again, for, for your time today. It was it's a pleasure. You. It's a pleasure, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, and um, hopefully we'll be speaking to some of your um, users sometime soon. I'm um, sure will be the case. Again, thanks very much to everyone who's uh, been with us and uh, we shall Speak soon, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining today. Bye-bye.